Hello and welcome. Uh, this is going to be probably my most ambitious project ever, since uh, my idea for this video is to show you a whole advanced rules uh, of the Next War system and uh, for this purpose I will use Next War Vietnam game as the most recent one. As you may remember, this, this system has rules divided into standard series rules and advanced series rules. And standard series rules are, well, pretty easy. There, uh, there are some uh, tricky things, but uh, all in all, they should, this shouldn't be very hard to understand and play. But the real fun starts with advanced series rules, and that's where I'm going to play today. Uh, I know I made a couple of mistakes in my previous Next War Vietnam video, so I hope I will be able to correct them in this video. And if you will notice that I made something wrong, feel free to critique me, feel free to point any of my mistakes. I won't be angry of that, I will be grateful instead. Okay, so first, uh, when we are playing advanced uh, uh, game, we have to choose our scenario. Uh, as for standard game, it has a couple of scenarios, as you may remember, uh, usually uh, three uh, smaller and one campaign scenario, but when it comes to the advanced scenarios, we don't have uh, such a difference. We have only hu three huge campaign scenarios, which, which are uh, strategic surprise, tactical surprise, and extended build-up. And uh, there is a couple of steps we have to make before we are starting a game. First is to choose a scenario. And for the purpose of this video I'm going to use tactical surprise, but uh, now at this point I will, uh, I'm gonna state that I will make some uh, changes. They won't be big, uh, there won't be any big or major change, changes, but I would like to show you a lot of stuff uh, in these rules and playing uh, tactical surprise right from the beginning would not allow me to do so, so I will change uh, some things to, uh, but only to show you how the stuff works. Uh, so next we have to determine intervention level for the USA. Okay, in the next war, uh, Taiwan, for example, you have to make a couple of rolls to choose, to, to check uh, what kind of intervention US and Japan will make. In this game you simply have to choose, but each level of intervention gives uh, enemy player more victory points. So, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to choose US Intervention on the level of 2. So I take US Intervention counter and place it on 2, in the box 2, of the matrix table. Well, as you can see, uh, I have a kind of small table. It, uh, it fits perfectly for the game itself, but I will need to do a couple of uh, camera acrob acrobatics to show you everything, I hope I will be able to do so. Okay, and then, since we choose the level 2, then we have to give 20, uh, 28 victory points to a non-allied player. So, uh, I need to take a victory points marker and place it on the 20, 28. Also, I'm taking United Nations uh, resolution marker and place it on the in the box one since United uh, Nation Nations res resolution has now plus one die roll modifier according to this. Okay, now uh, we uh, next we have to determine Thailand status. When U.S. intervention is three or higher, uh, there is a chance that Thailand will be more friendly towards us. In fact, uh, Thailand had uh, long, ta long time ties with USA, but in the recent years it changes and Thailand start to, started to drift towards China. So we don't know how the Thailand will react. It's, uh, when, we, when, uh, when we play at the level of zero, uh, Thailand remains neutral, but it may change uh, 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 as the game progresses. Okay, next. Agree or on or choose optional rules and adjust victory points by adding to the victory points total accordingly. 
So now this, the, uh, now this is something that I really like in these games. Uh, we have a couple of optional rules. Uh, they are about optional weapons, uh, some uh, situations that might happen, uh, interventions of the other major or minor powers, uh, other weapons and so. And I think I will use some of them. I'm not going to use a lot of them, uh, but uh, only, a, only a, some of them to show you how, the, how, the, how they work. So, uh, first, at the beginning I'm going to use Commonwealth Intervenes optional rules. This means that I have to choose a uh, level of intervention of the United Kingdom or other Commonwealth and it will be level 2. So I'm taking Commonwealth counter and place it on the level 2 just like USA. And now, uh, how many victory points I have to pay? Plus 10 or plus 20? If, uh, now, if US intervention is on the level 2 or more I have to pay 10, and if it's smaller than 2, I have to pay 20. Why? Well, when USA goes on war, then UK goes with them. But if UK wants to go alone, then it will be harder to persuade the people that we are going to fight mighty China all alone. So we have to give uh, plus 10 victory points for Chinese player. So now they have 38 pretty big, but because of that we will get some additional uh, units. Next, I am going to use PRC air power optional rules. This gives plus 3 victory points to allied player, so I am using uh, allied victory points marker and place it on the tree. And now what it means? This means that uh, Chinese player is allowed to take one J 15 uh, marker and place it on the Chinese carrier. China starts with a one carrier group and uh, normally they don't have any units that are sticked uh, or glued uh, closely to, the, uh, to their carriers. Instead they have uh, some units that are trained for and they might use carriers but they are not strictly, uh, marker, st strictly sticked to this uh, particular carrier. And now these rules uh, allows us to have such unit on the carrier. Okay, and, and uh, another rule that I'm going to use of the optional rules is United States Navy F-35Cs. What it means? Now we have to move a bit. Okay, now, as you can see, we have here uh, United States carrier boxes. And now each of these ca uh, carriers have some fixed air group. According to this rule we can change one of our FA-18 E or F into the one F-35C. So I will remove one FA-18 E into f 30 35C. This is much better unit, but because of that I have to pay one, 5 victory points to Chinese player. So now he starts with 43 victory points. Wow, this is pretty big number, but well, I'm doing it to show you how the stuff works. And finally, chemical weapons. And this is pretty interesting rule that allows uh, both sides to use chemical weapons. According to the official statements, statements, they don't have uh, chemical weapons, right? Yes, we believe them, especially, especially China, but I think Vietnam uh, still uh, is not uh, quite uh, true to, uh, when it comes to the chemical weapons. And we, we, uh, 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 thanks to this rule, we are allowed to have some of them. We don't pay any victory points for having the, these weapons at the beginning of the game, but Every time uh, we, we want to use any of them, we have to pay plus 5 victory points to our enemy. So, we have to determine how many uh, chemical weapons points we will have. For Chinese player, we have to roll 2d10. It is 6 and 8. It is 14 chemical weapons points. So I take Chinese chemical weapon marker and place it on the, in the box 14. And now I have to make one d10 roll for Vietnam. 
it is six, so they have six points of chemical weapons. Okay, and I think this is all when it comes to the optional rules. I'm not going to use any more of them. So let's return to our starting stuff. Okay, step E. Set up all available units in the order, ordered list allied first. Uh, I already made it uh, because to make it faster and now I'm going to show you how this stuff works because this is th there are some fancy funny things uh, going on here as well so let's uh, show you need to move my stuff a bit so we have two boards in this game first a big board called strategic display and here we have uh, naval units and air units mostly. Also we, we, we may have some uh, land units uh, here as well in the uh, holding boxes of the countries or some land areas. I will talk more about uh, this uh, sea uh, display later uh, because we don't have any uh, more units now uh, but let's go on to operational board. And this is a map where the most of the game takes place. So, I set up my units. Uh, Vietnam, Vietnamese units are starting uh, mostly in their uh, military regions because whole Vietnam is divided into a uh, number of military regions. We have four of them on this map. And we also have two corpses. So, units of the military regions are starting in their own military regions and corpses are starting where the setup tells them to. For example, uh, Vietnamese 2nd Corps starts in the 1st military region, while Vietnamese 1st Corps starts in the outskirts of Hanoi and Haiphong cities. And uh, that's pretty easy, but the most, uh, uh, most uh, complicated stuff is with Chinese units. They are starting in, in China, I guess this is pretty obvious, but you can set up your Chinese units only on the hexes with uh, highway, primary road, or clear terrain. Sorry, flat terrain. This is called flat terrain in this game. I used to uh, use a word called clear terrain, but it is called flat, so let's stick, stay with the, how they call it in this game. Uh, so, uh, uh, we are allowed to overstock our units uh, when we set up. So, uh, normally we can uh, have uh, four stacking points on the one hex, but when we, are, when we set up our unit, we can have more, but we have to uh, deconstruct such uh, stacks right in our first movement segment. So this is how uh, most of my uh, Chinese units are set up, and here on the west we have some more, because we have three Chinese army groups, and each of them uh, has uh, its own units, and these guys are going to attack from the west, while these two other groups are going to attack from the north. And they are all starting on the highway. Uh, we have three, gro three uh, groups, and uh, what's also important, we have two, uh, uh, we have two uh, mobile uh, supply units. One is here, and one is uh, on the north. And these units are pretty important. Because in the advanced games, uh, uh, supply rules are well, uh, much uh, are a bit more complicated and uh, much more tricky, and it is uh, very easy to have your units cut out of supply. And when they are out of supply, they are weaker, slower, and definitely you don't want it. So uh, mobile uh, mobile supply units are great when you have when you want when your units are progressing fast and you want to keep them supply. Otherwise you will have to uh, use emergency supply which is not a very uh, good thing because it's quite a risky. Okay, that's when it comes to the, our land units. And now let's go on to, back onto the strategic display again. And we have to do some setup here. Uh, Chinese units are uh, start, uh, la Chinese land units are starting in China, but when it comes to the Chinese naval units, they don't have to, 
they might start in the Gulf of Tonkin or China or South China Sea and that's where I'm going to do because they will allow me to get some uh, nice modifiers for the uh, sea control right at the beginning of the game. And now I think you remember that I told you that I'm going to change some stuff for the purpose of this video to show you some better things and now I, there is something that's something I'm going to do now because all US units are starting in Japan and they are uh, not allowed to make any actions in the first turn so Victor uh, so essentially they are out of play for the turn one and this is bad because there is a lot of stuff they can do and a lot of stuff I would like to show you so let's assume uh, that some of them are actually starting in Vietnam already. This is not according to the scenario rules, remember, th th that's uh, what I'm doing now is against uh, scenario rules, but I, I, I said that I'm going to use them on the purpose of showing you how the stuff works. Okay, so these units will be starting in Vietnam, and all these units here will be starting in Japan, they are on the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, carrier, which is in the uh, Indian Ocean, and these units are in the base of Guam. Okay, so that's all, and we 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 can go on with uh, other stuff because there is a lot of stuff we have to do before game even starts, and especially when I when I uh, like to explain all this stuff. Sorry, this is. Th these were game uh, 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 rules and we need game specific rules for this so we were here set up all of our label units in order list allied first and next follow any pre-game special scenario rules okay so we are getting closer because each scenario has some game specific rules and some uh, special rules that we have to go on before game even starts. Like here. Intervene. In, sorry, initiative. The non-allied player has an initi initiative automatically in the game turn 1 or 2. So, normally we have to check the number of the victory points and the, one, the player who has a proper number of uh, victory points, called initiative victory points, has an initiative in such a turn. But, according to this rule, Chinese player has initiative automatically in the turns 1 or 2. Rule 2, initiative victory points 15. So, if Chinese player will have a 15 uh, victory points difference in the uh, uh, given turn, he has an initiative. Uh, next, automatic victory point, victory point 17. So, if any player will gain uh, 70 victory points difference, he has to roll if he gets automatic victory or not. Surprise! All non-allied, this means China, attacks on game turn 1 receive a bonus of one column shift right on the combat results table. This is very important rule because uh, of that uh, Chin uh, Chinese player gains this nice column shift, but remember uh, that it works only for attacks. It doesn't work when Chinese units are defending. Weather. Non-allied player cho choice on the game turn 1. So, we will do it in the proper phase. Next, naval detection. Prior to the beginning of play, roll for na naval detection. Okay, and this is the first action we are actually going to do in this game. Okay, so let's take die. Let's go for counters. And let's do naval detection stuff, because this is something new. Let's start with strategic display. We have four naval units in on sea and two in China. And for each of, for all, each of them we have to make a roll. If we will get uh, one or two, uh, you need to get uh, point detection. If we get three or four, you need to get area detection. Of course point detection is better, because it, because it tells us exactly where such a na naval unit is. And next, you can see that some sea areas have such a markers, such a, such a marks. 
it tells us if this area gives us some modifier to uh, uh, to the certain player. For example, on the South China Sea, Chinese player gets minus one modifier for his naval detection attempts, but uh, U.S. player, uh, sorry, Allied player, gains plus one. So it is easier for Chinese player to detect any units here, but it is harder for Allied player. Okay, so let's start with maybe with this carrier group for uh, Allied player. Uh, he has plus one, so two, it is plus one, three. So this unit is area detected. Next, let's go for this uh, uh, surface action group uh, of in the Gulf of Tonkin. Uh, Allied player gets minus one, three, sorry, two, and it is minus one, so it is point detection here. Next, let's uh, try to uh, find this uh, Vietnamese surface action group. Chinese player gets minus one, three. So they are area detected. And now we have these two Chinese amphibious groups here. No modifiers for them. Three area detect detected. And the other five no detected. And next, we have these two uh, allied units in the Indian Ocean. Next for this uh, carrier group, one. They are point detected. Now, where do I have? Oh, yes, it is here. And now for the amphibious group, eight. They are non-detected. And finally, we have one more naval unit, which is and on the strategic display, it is here, and it is in the port. And now, every unit which starts the game in the port gets area detected automatically. So I'm going to place area detected here, and now I will make a roll, because I still can get point detected. No, I, I didn't made it. But still, that's not all we have to do before we'll start our game. So let's go with other pre-game actions. And now it says, PRC cruise missiles, missiles attack. And now, prior to the beginning of play, the PRC may conduct 10 missile, either cruise or ballistic, attacks on any eligible targets, damage to airbase, airfield, counts for steps A and B of the air superiority sortie step for game turn 1 and collateral damage is resolved immediately. So, what it means? Chinese player starts with uh, 40, 40 points of uh, ballistic missile and 21, 20, 21 points of cruise missiles. And now we can to uh, use 10 of, the, uh, 10 of them to, uh, to uh, conduct some attacks on the enemy targets. And uh, if you have uh, uh, Next War uh, Supplement 1, then you get su the, uh, such a handy uh, counters with missile target on the side 1 and cruise missile target on the side 1. Why they are, they are very useful? Because you have to choose your targets first for all of your attacks and then to conduct them. Uh, you cannot just launch a target, launch a strike on uh, such a hex, then uh, see that your uh, attack failed, then decide to make more attacks on such a hex. No, you have to choose all your targets first and then to resolve them. And that's what I'm going to do now. So I will choose my targets and then I, I will, ba will be back to resolve them. Okay. Uh, all my uh, missile targets are chosen, and now uh, let's talk a bit about uh, using our uh, theater weapon, weapon, uh, uh, weapons like missiles and cruise missiles. As for cruise missiles, our targets are installations, this means port and air bases, airfields, beachheads, and detected supply weapons, detected supply, uh, supreme HQ or naval unit, uh, air defense trucks, and missile point markers. And for ballistic missiles, 
our, t our possible targets are installations, airfields, detected supply uh, depot, detected headquarters. So these are, these are uh, targets we can choose uh, at the beginning of the game for Chinese missiles. And so let's start with strategic display because I have a couple targets for my cruise missiles all over this board. And I am going to start with uh, this uh, uh, Vietnamese surface action group because this is quite an interesting thing. Uh, normally, we are just choosing our target and resolving a strike with our missile. But naval units are the only units that are allowed to defend themselves against enemy mi uh, cruise missiles attack due to the fancy thing called close-in weapons system. Uh, I don't know if some of you watched a movie uh, called Sum of All Fears, I think that's how it was in English, I watched it in, watched it in Polish, uh, and uh, there is a very go good scene in this movie, even so the book is better, uh, that shows how such close-in weapon system work against Soviet cruise missiles attacking uh, US uh, carriers. So. We have a, a Vietnamese surface action group and we have to check its close-in weapon system value. So, we have a naval units uh, air defense uh, force value and now we, we, uh, we have to ch ch check what unit we are using. US carrier naval battle group, no. Amphibious or US Japan Russian surface action group, no. Other carrier surface action group yes this is surface action group so its anti-air artillery level is 2 and for the close-in weapon system we are using anti-air artillery so our close-in weapon system value is 2 so we have to check if we managed to shut down some of the cruise missiles approaching our surface action group we, we will use advanced air uh, defense fire table and use air artillery of two and let's make a roll and now we have plus one when we are using it against cruise missile I rolled four plus one is five no if we want to get this plus one we, we would be able to, uh, to shot some of the cruise missiles but we failed so uh, uh, enemy cruise missiles are approaching our surface action group and let's see if they hit or not. Uh, this is uh, uh, so we will use advanced strike table and first we have to check the terrain of our target or our target. If we for example our target is naval unit so, so we have to use this verse and now what kind of weapons enemy is using? Cruise missile. So we have to check in this column. Let's make a roll. Oh it is nine it is worst result possible, so it is a miss without even checking any modifiers. Uh, because uh, you can see if we get seven or more, we always get a miss. So, this is a miss. But that was just the first shot. We have some more. Uh, my next targets are enemy anti-air systems. I'm going to launch two of my cruise strikes against Vietnamese detection systems. So, I will use air defense trucks verse cruise missile column, so this is this column, and now what kind of uh, modifiers I get. There is a lot of modifiers for strikes, as you can see, but what we are using is non-US cruise missile strike. Okay, we know uh, uh, all the uh, US uh, stuff is better than all the others, so since we are using crappy Chinese cruise missiles, we get plus one. And that's all here. Let's make a ro first roll. Six plus one is seven. Seven in the cruise, it is a miss. So now the other hit. Oh, this should be better. We get three plus one is four. So, cruise. No, 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 it is a miss again. 
So our both cruise mi our cruise missiles failed. Next I'm firing two cruise missiles against enemy SAM weapons uh, and uh, rocket we we rocket anti-air weapon system. So first hit three again. Mech. And maybe one more, maybe this will be more successful. Oh, nope. It won't. So, uh, all our attempts to uh, uh, well pulverize enemy uh, anti-air uh, systems failed. But still we have some more chances to do nasty stuff to our enemy. Uh, next are, is a Vietnamese holding box. What holding box is? We have only a part of Vietnam on the operational board, while Vietnam is, well, much bigger country, as you can see. For example, here, this is the, st uh, this is the area on the operational board, and here is the rest of the Vietnam. So, uh, on the other part of the Vietnam are also some air bases and airfields, and uh, we are, they are represented by this box. And we are, of course, able to attack them with our cruise missiles, as you can see here. So I decided to launch my two attacks against the Vietnamese airfields, sorry, air bases. Uh, and uh, all this terrain, all this, sorry, all, all this box is treat, treaten, treated as the roof woods. So we'll be using roof woods uh, mark, uh, uh, verse, and we are using cruise missiles. So this column. And we also get plus one because we are targeting, we are using non-US cruise missiles. So, first shot. Wow! Now, that was good. Zero plus one, it is one. It is X. Oh, this, is, this was a great, sh great shot. Because X means destroyed. So, we are placing destroyed marker here. And... We are also placing collateral damage marker here. This is good. We will resolve all the collateral damage at the end of this step. So let's go on. Now I'm going to use my cruise missile to attack this airbase. 7 plus 1, it is a miss. And next thing I'm going to do is to attack enemy missile points. You can use your cruise missiles to uh, reduce the number of enemy missile points. Vietnam starts with five missile points and I'm using one of my cruise missiles to attack them. This is hardened target, so I will use a column uh, uh, this verse and the cruise missile uh, column. And uh, now I have plus one because of non-US uh, non cruise missiles. 3 plus 1 is 4. 4, this is 1. So Vietnamese uh, missile points are reduced by 1. Good. Okay, and now let's go on on the operational board. Here I will be using uh, uh, ballistic missiles because I have much more of them, yet they have a, a very limited uh, range. As you can see, you cannot use uh, most of them at the uh, strategic display, so they are mostly used on the operational board. And my first target is this Vietnamese air base. Ooh, hi, hell, that was a great strike. It is flat terrain. Flat marsh, we are using scoot, and we have zero. This means another X. Great. So this airbase was completely destroyed with this strike. I have to place another collateral uh, strike uh, marker too with destroyed. This will be very effective. And next, I am going to attack. Oh, I marked this airbase, but well, I assume I, I will attack this uh, airfield instead, because I would like to show you something else. 
later. So uh, let's resolve this attack. It is flat terrain as well. Oh god! Zero. This means another an another destruction. Destroyed and collateral strike with destroyed, yes. So I have to say that it was quite an effective uh, firing and now I have to reduce the number of the missiles. I spent two missile points, so let's go on to the matrix table and I'm from 40 to 38 and I spent eight cruise missile points. So I started with 21 and now I have 13. And that's all. No, that's not all. Next we have to resolve this uh, collateral damage stuff. So, every time you strike enemy uh, airbase or airfield or a combat helicopter, it is a there is a chance that, you will, uh, that they will suffer some uh, collateral damage. Uh, AO bases are in general much more vulnerable than airfields, as you will see. We will use collateral damage table and we have strike versus airbase and column X because we destroyed this airbase. So let's make a row and see what will happen. It is 5. 5 means air. Air. Owning player chooses one step lost from any air unit in the basing box attacked. So we have to choose one unit, uh, one air unit that uh, is based in Vietnam and we have to reduce it. So I will use this unit because it, uh, it, this Su-22 is my weakest air unit, so I will reduce it. And this collateral damage is removed. Now we have uh, two more collateral damage markers on this operational board. So we are going on here. And first, here. This is an airfield. So we will, not, we will use strikes versus airfield. And this is X. So let's make a roll. Three again. Hmm. Air mobile point. So uh, one air mobile points, point is destroyed. Uh, Vietnam starts with two air mobile points. And now they have only one. And finally, we have uh, one collateral damage on this Vietnamese airbase. Eight. It is nothing. Now, we managed to destroy two airbases and one airfield. We have to mark it, because it will be quite important in the air superiority step. We will take Air bases captured, destroyed, and we place it on three because we destroyed uh, two air bases and one airfield. Now, this is something you might ask about because uh, counter says air bases, not airfields. But you will see later that we have to count airfields uh, and a number of air, air bases, airfields captured or destroyed. So we use this counter for both airfields and airbases. Okay, so let's go. We, we resolved PRC cruise missiles attacks and we have two more steps to go. 8. PRC Special Operation Forces. On the game turn 1, during special, op force, uh, sp special Forces phase, the PRC players conduct two Special Operations phases. So we will do this stuff during Special Operation phases. I will talk about them later and next st next step. Allied air. Prior to the beginning of play, the allied player must randomly choose three AO units in the Social Republic of Vietnam basing box and half rounded up of all other AO units, none by type, in each basing box and place them in the flown box. These are unavailable in the game turn one. Alright. So that's a very nasty stuff, st st step for Vietnamese, for Allied player. First, we have to choose 
half sorry uh, three AO units from the uh, Vietnamese holding box and move them into flown box. What it means? I will talk about uh, AO stuff in the proper phase, but uh, for now. Each uh, AO box is, ba is uh, divided into three sections. Ready? These are planes you are allow allowed to use in this turn. Flown. These are units that were used in this turn and they, and they will be allowed to use in the next turn. And aborted. Uh, aborted is a box uh, where you, you placed your units that uh, suffered aborted results during combat, uh, anti-air, fire and so, and there is a big chance that they won't be available in the next turn. So I have to you move three, three units from my box and move them here. I should do it randomly, yes. But for the purpose of this video I'm placing them like that because I'm going to show you more stuff during a superiority uh, uh, phase, so let's use this weakest one. And now as for the other boxes. We have one, we, uh, in, the, in the Japan boxes we have two, three, four, five, sorry, two, three, four, five, six. So we have to move three of them here. Next, this box, we have to move half of them here, so let it be these units. Now, here, let it be these units. Normally you should mark, you should care more about uh, making it randomly, but now uh, we don't care about it much. So, that's all, that's all the stuff uh, we have to do before we will even start our game, yes. As for now, we are finally able to start our game. And now, let's return here. And now, each next war game comes with such a very useful player aid that tells us what to do in each phase. And this is a very good thing, especially in the advanced rules, because there is a really lot of stuff to do, and it helps you to remember about it. First, we have a weather phase. And roll one die that determine weather turn, except game turn one, initiative player may choose weather. Okay, so this is a turn when we can, a phase when we can choose our weather. Weather is uh, quite important because it, uh, it can limit your movement allowance and your AO units. At the beginning of the game, a player who has more AO units and wants to gain AO superiority uh, rather opts for the good weather. In some of the next war games, you have also to choose the season. There is a winter, autumn, summer, you know. But in the next war, Vietnam, there are only two seasons, wet and dry. A wet season uh, gives you a bigger chance for bad weather, while dry season gives you a bigger chance for the clear weather. So I will choose dry season for this game, and as for the first uh, turn, I will choose clear weather. Because I, I want to use all my uh, AO units uh, and uh, I hope my uh, land units will move quickly. Okay, that's all for the weather phase. Next we have initiative phase. As you remember, Chinese player has automatically initiative in the game turn 1 and 2. So we can skip this turn, skip this phase either. We have also to use UN resolution die roll, but not none in the game turn 1. US, UN resolution uh, allows you to uh, initially to uh, end the game in such a phase and you have to uh, make a roll and if you get a good roll you might end the game now of course not in the turn one but the other player is allowed to put a veto okay next we have electronic detection phase and now where the fun starts uh, we are allowed to uh, try to detect enemy headquarters because uh, headquarters are always making a lo lot of electronic noise and it is easier to detect them. And if you will, uh, able to, you, you will be able to detect them, then your special forces will be able to attack them. Now, each player has three attempts 
to, uh, that, uh, to make electronic detection and a light player gains one more attempt for each country that intervenes on, uh, on its side. So, Chinese player has three attempts while a light player has five attempts because United Kingdom and U United, United States are, inter are on his side. So let's start with uh, uh, Ch uh, China attempts. I will try to detect this uh, Vietnamese headquarter because it's on the fr front line and it may support its units around. So I will use electronic detection table and for non-allied I have to roll two or less to detect enemy unit. And if it is Chinese unit I get minus one and if I have AVAX advantage on the level three or four I get another minus one. AVAX advantage is on the level three so I have minus one and it is Chinese, uni Chinese player so I get another minus one. So I get minus two for my die roll. So I am trying to detect this headquarter. Eight. It is a miss. <laughs> okay, I will try it one more because uh, I'm not limited to make uh, only one attempt per headquarter. So I might try to do it again. Yes, I get three minus two. It is uh, one. So I uh, detected this uh, unit. And for the land detection. Uh, we are not using area detection or point detection, but just a detection marker with non-allied sight and allied sight. This is allied unit, so I mark it with detected marker. And now I am allowed to make one more attempt. And I will do it here. Here is another headquarter. Two. Great. This is detection, so they are detected. And now it is time for allies to do their magic. And now they don't get any modifiers, which is bad. But allies have to roll four or less to detect enemy headquarters. So I will start with this headquarter. Sorry, I'm gonna move camera a bit. So you will be able to see the stuff. Now this stuff, this uh, this will be my first. Yes, they are detected. Now this headquarter. No, this is second roll. Again. No, this is third roll. And one more time. Yes. And now I have uh, one more roll and I will try to detect this headquarter right here. This will be my fifth attempt. Nope. This is seven. So they failed. Okay, so uh, each side managed to detect two enemy headquarters. And now there is some stuff I forgot about and I have to do it now because uh, we managed to destroy two enemy air bases. And for each enemy installation destroyed, a uh, player gains plus two victory points. So I'm going to take my victory points markers and uh, place them on the, the proper place. Here we have victory points this turn for China and we destroyed two enemy air bases so we have two and four. Remember this means only air bases uh, because airfields are not installations. This, this, uh, this is a thing that uh, I had a, a lot of problems uh, when I played this uh, next war games uh, for the first time since I tend to mistake airfields with air bases when it comes uh, what is installation and what is not installation. Okay, so that's all and now we are going into another phase 
which is first Special Operations Forces phase. Notice that it says Initiative Turn Only. This means that you play this phase only when any of the player has an initiative in, in such a turn. If, there, if a non-player has an initiative in such a turn, you have to skip all these uh, phases marked with initiative turn only because such turn is called contested turn. But in this uh, turn Chinese player has an initiative, so we uh, will be playing this phase. And now we have to return to our special scenario rules saying on the game turn 1 during Special Operation Forces phase, the PRC players conduct two Special Operation Forces phase and allocate its Special Forces counters twice. Allocate all available counters, resolve the missions, do not roll for survival, all automatically survive, then reallocate and resolve again, roll for survival as normal. So, we have to take our Special Operation markers, place them, resolve their attacks or uh, any other activities, remove them, and then place them again, resolve all their actions and then roll for their survival. And now, what Special Forces can do? There are uh, virtually two possible kinds of activities for them. Rights and Recon. Rights are attacks. Uh, special Forces are allowed to attack uh, enemy installation or enemy detected uh, headquarters or supply depots or mobile uh, supply units. If so, they are able to, uh, uh, to place strike markers on such uh, units or installations er, and to reduce their uh, effectiveness, sometimes even to suffer some damage due to the collateral damage. But, as I said, we need to uh, have uh, some of these units detected. So, for example, during uh, electronical detection uh, phase, we managed to detect some of the en enemy headquarters and we are now able to attack them with our special forces. But if we uh, have any, any enemy units that we want to attack, uh, for example, later, we can uh, use our units to recon mission and they are able to detect such a unit. Also, uh, uh, special Forces units are allowed to make interdiction attacks. These are attacks on the enemy uh, transport uh, 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 roads, like roads, highways and so, and uh, to uh, damage them so they will be less effective. Finally, uh, Special Operation units are able to attack enemy uh, uh, detection truck, SAM or theater weapons, to reduce effectiveness of enemy aerial defense trucks or enemy theater weapons. And finally, targeting. Uh, we can choose a target that we want to attack later, for example with our uh, missiles or with our uh, air forces, and we might uh, use our special forces to mark such a place with targeted. And because of that, our, uh, our units later will have uh, will have uh, much easier to attack such and such a hex. So th these are uh, uh, actions you can do with your special forces and now uh, I have to allocate all my special forces to launch their first attack. So let's carry on with this. Uh, <coughs> special forces missions. <coughs> Sorry I had to turn on the light because it went uh, too dark. I hope everything will be still perfectly visible. <clears throat> My first mission will be <clears throat> to ride this uh, Vietnamese airport, air, air base, sorry. So this is a terrain called Roof Woods and I will use <clears throat> Roof Woods verse. It is installation, so this will be this verse. And now I have to make a roll. It is AL8, so you can tell this is a failure. So <clears throat> they are removed. This is, uh, this is first series of actions, so I don't have to make rolls for their survival. Next I'm going to um, launch an attack on the Vietnamese defense, uh, <coughs> sorry, detection system. It will be this 
column detection SAM theater weapons. So let's make a roll here. It is four. It is minus one. Good. So Vietnamese detection systems are reduced by one. <clears throat> that was success. And now let's go on onto the <coughs> operational board. And now what I'm going to do first is to <clears throat> try to detect this this Vietnamese supply depth. So this is detection mis mission and my target is supply mission in the f in the flat terrain. And notice that there is minus one here. When <clears throat> When there is minus one or minus two on a special forces counter, it means that it gets additional modifier for the detection missions. So, zero. Great. They are detected. So, I, I, I can place detected marker on this supply depot. And because of that, I will be able to launch it. <clears throat> my at attacks or special operation missions against this supply depot. This is great. Now I'm going to attack this uh, headquarter. It is detected so I can do it and notice that it is in the we uh, on the same hex with enemy division. Uh, when there is enemy unit that has a combat value uh, it gives us another negative modifier. It says if occupied by less than one brigade, it is plus one. If occupied by at least one brigade, it is plus two. It is division, so we have plus two. So our target is <coughs> HQ. We are attacking in the jungle, so we are going to use this column. And we have plus two because of the enemy division. It will be very hard. It is six. Six plus two is eight. So it's a failure. All right, and we have two more missions. First, I'm going to target this airbase. So I will use targeting column. Eight, it is a failure. And finally, I'm going to make a right against this, <coughs> this Vietnamese headquarter. It is in the jungle, so any jungle, hit quarter, one. I made it. It is two. So this uh, this hit quarter is placed with uh, is marked sorry with a counter with the strike of two. This is a very good for uh, China because this means that we won't be able to use this hit quarter in, in this entire turn. Wow, that was something. And now I have to uh, make one more round of Special Forces missions, so I have to give them their targets. Okay, all my missions are allocated again, but this time, after every mission, I will have to roll for the survival. So I'm starting here. Again, I would like to target this uh, airbase. Three. It is good. This uh, <clears throat> this base is targeted, so I have to mark it with target minus one. And now I have to roll for survival. Uh, essentially, in the turn one, if we, with the tactical surprise, I would have to roll nine to kill my special forces units, I believe. So let's roll for him first. It is eight. Oh. I need to check. Okay, it is strat. It, it is tactical surprise, so I have minus two, so it is six. It is right, so it is seven. And if I get seven or more, unit is eliminated. But sorry, it wasn't right. It was reckon because I I only had liked to put, uh, wanted to place targeted, so it's not right. So I have only a minus two and 8 minus 2 is 6. So they survived. Sorry for this minor mistake. And next I'm going to make a ride against this Mi-24 helicopters here. 
this is a right and it is marsh my target is helicopter six it is a miss so now I have to make a roll for survival and eight again and this time they are eliminated why because we get minus two for tactical sur surprise so it's six and plus one because it was a right mission so it is seven so they are done they are out of the game and next I'm going to make a right against this newly detected supply depot it is in the flat so uh, I have it will be very very hard because I need to get zero or one nope it is a miss so now survival roll zero they are fine okay any other missions on this board I think that's all all the other missions are on the strategic display so I will have to move there okay let's go on on strategic display with camera and what I'm going to do first is to attack this Vietnamese airbase here it is in the roof woods so we will use this column 5 installation in the roof woods it is a miss and now survival roll 5 they are fine and finally I have two more attacks against enemy uh, AO defense systems first against enemy SAMs two it is great but I get plus one when attacking SAMs so I have three still it is enough to suffer one loss for enemy SAMs and now survival roll six they are fine okay and the last mission against enemy detection systems four oh I think they made it yes they made it it is four so Vietnamese detection systems are, are also reduced to six and finally survival roll six se seven we have minus two for a tactical surprise and uh, so it's five and plus one for right mission it is six so they are fine Okay, and that's all when it comes to the first special operations uh, for uh, special operation forces uh, phase. And I think this is a good moment to finish this part of the video. And in the second part of the video, uh, we will go into the naval and air stuff. This is quite a complicated stuff, so it will be good to, good uh, good to make it make another part of the video focused on it. So, thank you for watching and see you next time.